Hello, and welcome to The Cup That Cheers. I'm Elizabeth, and today we're jumping on the bandwagon of seasonal content. Not so much spooky seasonal content, but jet. Specifically, the jet beads on this antique Edwardian or late Victorian collar. Antique clothes that were used for mourning, not as in mourning the time of day, but mourning spelled M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, which has to do with the period of time um, after a person loses a loved one. In the past, and even still today, uh, people tend to behave differently and tend to wear different things than they normally would have. Back in the 19th century and early 20th century, which is when this collar was originally made, uh, people used to wear a specific set of mourning clothes, especially women, used to wear special mourning clothes for a set time period after the death of a loved one. And that time period changed depending on who that loved one was. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a piece from my collection of antique garments, this collar. It was probably made in the 1890s or early 1900s, so late Victorian or early Edwardian. And this was given to me by the collection manager of um, the museum where I used to work and where I used to volunteer. I used to work in the education department about five years ago, and I used to volunteer in the collections center with the artifacts. This particular collar was in the collection with no provenance associated with it. It had been donated to the museum probably sometime in the 1970s or 1980s and there was really no information about it. It is not in the best condition. Um, from the front it looks all right but when when I show you the close-ups later you'll see that it's falling apart in some places. Um, and this uh, item was deaccessioned and at the time that it was shown to me it was actually set aside to be thrown away. Yes, thrown away in the garbage, literally. So um, I have this collar. It is made of jet, what I think could be pure jet, natural jet beads. If it's not natural jet, then it's French jet, which is a type of glass. But um, I decided because jet was used for mourning jewelry and this collar uh, would have been used, could be used for fashion as well as for a mourning garment because of the jet and because it's not very shiny and yet it is very beautiful. Um, I thought I'd jump on the bandwagon of seasonal content and do some close-up shots of this artifact. So this is a collar that dates from either the late 1890s or the early 1900s. Jet is a naturally occurring mineral. 
that is black. And as you can see, all of these beads are faceted. They are strung on what I believe to be cotton thread, which as you can see is breaking in places. And they are put together with possibly silk ribbon, this textured, almost grow grain ribbon, almost twill, not quite twill tape. It's very scratchy. And um, around the neckline, there is silk file to protect the neck. Now it's been tacked down here at the side, here at the center back, and it looks like it used to be tacked down at this side as well, but it's come undone. There are wire loops. Let's see if I can find it. Wire loops, one on this side. And the other one, where did it go? And one on this side. Focus camera. <laughs> Probably for tying a ribbon through to put it on. Initially, when I first saw it, I thought that all of the beading had been done separately and simply sewn on with the tape like insertion lace. But I no longer believe that. As you can see, there's some discoloration on the tape and the discoloration on the tape is only where the thread is attached to it. And also, if you were, if you turn it on the inside, I'll show you the inside in a bit. If you turn it on the inside, you can't see the stitches that are holding the beading to the tape. So what I think happened is the person who made this did the beading while it was being put onto the tape. And I think they took one stitch in one edge of the tape and put the beads on the thread and then brought it over and took the stitch in the other side, in the other edge of the tape, put more beads on, took another stitch back across. And then in between those other stitches, making a wide V, they put the same other kinds of stitches, the same stitches, do the same thing essentially, except that they put, as you can see, there's a pattern. They went through, when they went to do the next um, stitch, they did the stitch, put one bead or three beads, and then crossed over a line of one of the other beads and put the needle and thread through the third bead up on that line and then put two more beads on the thread, did the same thing, crossed over the next line of beading and so on and so forth. And then took their stitch and then went back the other way, zigzagged the other way. This edge was also sewn on with the beading integral to it. This trim here, however, might not have been. It might have been a pre-made, pre-purchased trim that they simply applied. It's very heavily, here we are at the collar, it's very heavily pleated. The entire thing is hand sewn. You can see some of the wire. They put a wire in the collar to help it hold its shape. On this part of the inside, you can see that it has been mended in places. When I first saw 
the inside of the collar, the light was kind of dim because I was in the collection center at the time and I didn't notice that this stitching does not cover the entire surface of the inside. So I think those stitches are meant when where the thread broke off earlier and that the original stitching is like this on the inside where it looks exactly the same on the inside as it does on the outside. look at this collar and the beading patterns and the trim and all of the things that it's made of. Let's talk a little bit about the use of jet for both morning fashion and for regular fashion fashion during the years. Beginning in the ancient world we have um, evidence that jet was made not only into jewelry but other kinds of things. Um, dating back to, I think, 10,000 BC is the earliest um, example that anybody has found of some items being made of jet, and those things were in Germany. We know that the ancient Romans used them, we know that the ancient Vikings used them, we know that people had been picking them up from the beaches at uh, Whitby in England and in other parts of the world. Jet has been mined in various different parts of the world, including North America. And for the most part, it has been used for making decorative items and for making, for decorating weapons and for decorating people's clothing or accessories. Through, since about the Middle Ages, um, jet had been less popular as a decorative item uh, because other things were being developed um, but had a real huge, huge resurgence in popularity, of course, in the 19th century, influenced by Queen Victoria, who had uh, jewelry made for herself when her mother died, and of course when her husband, Prince Albert, died. After Prince Albert died, Queen Victoria decreed that the only kind of jewelry that could be worn at court, around her anyway, for quite a long period of time had to be made with jet. Um, but despite the popularity of jet in the 1850s, it continued to be more expensive. And so quite a few items, quite a few other materials were invented or used to imitate jet. One of the most popular being something called French jet, which is a type of glass. Um, other types of things that were used were onyx, which is a semi-precious gemstone. Um, later in the 19th century, uh, like vulcanite and bakelite and other kinds of rubber or petroleum products, artificial products were invented to um, imitate jet at a lower cost. Um, and they all have different properties. Initially, when I first saw this collar, I thought it was real jet, but now I'm not so sure. Now I think it's French jet for a few reasons. What the most, the main reason is that it is cold or cool to the touch. It's not like freezing cold like ice, but it's definitely noticeably cooler than room temperature and noticeably, noticeably cooler than my body temperature. If this were plastic or vulcanite or one of the other kind of uh, plastic resins that was used to imitate jet, it would feel warm. Um, if it was real jet, it would feel basically at room temperature. It would not feel cold to the touch. Um, if it was real jet, it would also feel surprisingly light. Jet is essentially fossilized wood. It is related it's actually considered a type of coal and it is also considered a semi-precious gem in the same way that 
amber is and that tortoise shell is and that ivory is. Um, so real jet will be very, very light. This is not heavy per se, but it's not feather light. It's not notice like surprisingly light. Um, when I tried it on earlier, it was not at all oppressive in its weight. I could easily have worn it over another dress, which is how this originally would have been worn as an, as an accessory <clears throat> to some kind of dress or blouse or something with possibly a black color or possibly just fashionable, which means not necessarily black. Just because something is black does not mean it's worn in memory of someone who died. Black has also been an expensive color to create because the kinds of dyes that are available, most of them don't stay black. The items dyed with those substances don't often stay black. And you can see in this collar that there is some discoloration on the black uh, cloth tape that is used to make the body and hold the beads together. Um, so it has turned brown to yellowish brown and a lot of other kinds of black clothing dyed with cheaper black dyes will do that. So if you find some antique garment and it's kind of a rusty yellowish orangey brown color, it might have originally been black and then it's just faded and discolored over time. But the really expensive dyes, the more expensive substances, um, stay black and stay dark black for a long time. They don't discolor, they don't turn gray, they don't get all kind of musty looking and splotchy looking, they stay nice and dark. And we can see that that is what's happened with the black silk at the neckline of the collar. Here, it's still nice and black. It's not discolored in any way. So uh, for these reasons, I, I really believe that these beads, while they, they look very much like real jet beads, they're faceted. None of the facets are um, equal. They're all unequal. They're all different as if it's been literally chipped away from a piece of stone. Um, I think these beads are French jet and that was something that became a lot more usual later, the later you got into the eight, 19th century, so 1880s, 1890s, early 1900s. It seemed to be a lot more um, fashionable and a lot more acceptable to have fake jet or French jet, which is essentially glass, um, especially in such quantities as were used in this cape and especially because this is not a piece of just one brooch one piece of jewelry it is covering this entire cape and i have a feeling that buying this many beads of real jet might have been cost prohibitive so that's why i think that uh this uh, capelet or collar is french jet probably rather than natural jet. Now, what are my plans for it? Well, I'll turn it around so you can see the front a little bit. I don't know. Initially, I had intended to get some more black beads, some more black jet beads, and try to restore it. But it looks like the thread itself is falling apart. So, I think I might um, restore it and I don't know what I can do to stabilize the thread. I'll have to do some more research on that um, to see what would be the best thing. I don't think I'm going to take it apart completely um, because I, in order to do that I'd have to undo all of the beading because it's the thread that's holding the beads together that's falling apart. And so undoing the beading and then just using the beads for something else, I might be able to take a pattern from these beaded strips 
and sort of work out, write down um, how it was put together and possibly recreate it at some point in the future. But right now I'm going to leave it as it is. Um, I have some acid-free paper, tissue paper that I'm going to pack it in. And turn it again to the other side so you can see how the collar looks a little bit. Um, but at this point, that's what I'm going to do. I'm certainly not going to wear it out anywhere. I tried it on for the beginning of this video, and that was the first time I'd ever tried it on. And I don't think I will do that again. It didn't fall apart. It didn't seem to uh, damage the collar in any way that to just have it draped over my shoulders. But still, I don't want to um, hurt anything. So I just thought you would like to see some French jet, possibly natural jet, but I think more likely to be French jet beads worked into an actual period accurate historical garment. So you can see how beading was used in the past. If you have liked this video, please give it a like. If you would like to see more content, please subscribe to the channel. I will be beginning my um, series on making a stitch sampler, but using that stitch sampler to teach about four different simple stitches, the four stitches that I taught my students, and then some variations on each of the stitches that will allow you to, once you've mastered those four stitches, you could actually do nine or 10 stitches just by varying the size and the spacing of those stitches. So if you'd like to see that, please come back to the channel. I hope this has been an interesting look at an antique garment. Um, I always love looking at antique garments, so I hope you do too. So in conclusion, everybody, stay safe, um, stay healthy, have a lot of fun, and I'll see you later. Bye.